It may come as a surprise that up to one fifth of all food is produced in cities. Urban agriculture is especially important in developing countries. And Kampala, the capital of Uganda, is no exception. In such cities, there is an abundance of water and organic waste that can be turned into food and into profit. All that's lacking is space. While all sorts of vegetables and fruit thrive in the city, dairy cows are commonly kept in backyards. This is called zero grazing. The cows are kept in stalls and brought fodder to eat. Nabasiri Nalongo has been producing fresh milk for nearly 20 years. She feeds her cows on grasses that she grows in her garden. She benefits in many ways. It has been so helpful because I don't buy inputs. The land is mine, the cows too, and I get money out of the activity. When you drink milk, you remain healthy too. In common with many urban farmers, Nabasire brought her skills along with her when she moved to the city. While I lived in a village, I used to keep cows and goats, and I was accustomed to it, so I just continued. Just a kilometer or so away lives Herbert Sally, a retired civil servant. He too keeps stall-fed dairy cows, but he feeds them mainly on waste from the local market. However, Herbert has to be careful. The banana peelings, discarded fruit and vegetable need to be sorted to remove harmful plastics. Herbert sells milk and he grows fruits and vegetables too. He's proud of his city farm and believes passionately in recycling, converting market leftovers into milk. But Herbert goes one step further. He turns the manure from his cows into domestic gas for cooking. Herbert had seen a biogas unit on a friend's farm and decided to build one himself. He traced the engineer and requested a design to match his needs. I would highly recommend this system for farmers, especially in urban areas, in the city centers like here, uh, because of two things. Mainly, in the urban area, we are using a lot of electricity on uh, lighting and, and uh, cooking. So when you use the system, you cut down the costs of electricity and fuel, and also improve the environment, because you don't cut the trees around you to get fuel for cooking. The principle is simple. Cow manure is collected and put in the inlet box. Water is then added. It's thoroughly mixed and any grass and debris is removed. The liquid is then released into the main chamber. Here it goes through a process called anaerobic digestion. This releases biogas, which is primarily methane. The gas builds up at the top of the chamber and pressure forces it into a pipe, which then leads the gas to the kitchen for cooking. It can also be used for lighting. But there's another very useful output from this process, the slurry from the digested material. This odorless substance is rich organic manure. It's forced out of the biogas plant through fermentation and can be used to fertilize vegetables, fodder grasses, crops, and fruits. Cheaper biogas models are now on the market, but it's thanks to pioneers like Herbert that the technology is taking off. This is recycling at its best. Instead of creating a rubbish disposal problem, food waste 
is used as livestock fodder. Grass grown in urban gardens can be fed too. Milk is produced. The manure from the cows can then be turned into gas for cooking and lighting through a biogas plant. Natural fertilizer helps to grow plants for the home or fodder for animals. This completes a virtuous cycle. Urban agriculture is consistently overlooked when we think of food production. Yet it has a vital role to play in feeding the world and in keeping cities both healthy and green. As urban farmers themselves have found out, the key is recycling resources that otherwise pile up as a pollution problem. And increasingly we're learning that productive, sustainable land management is crucial in cities and not just simply a rural concern.